Hello everyone, welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the Tier 6 Cleveland Cruiser that we got over here. A little side note, over here you can see a little flag that I have now. I've made it up to rank 12 in the rank battles. And I've also figured it out a bit more. I will get this flag, the port of Kyure, or however you're supposed to pronounce that. It's Jap Japanese, so I'm not entirely sure. And when you get those at the end of the season, and when you reach rank 14, you get the second league flag. When you get to like rank 10 or something, you get a more bluish version with a double star, indicating you've made it to the to another league. But anyway, let's take a look at my configuration. The Cleveland is the first tier 6 cruiser to get a defensive AA fire ability which increases the intensity of AA fire and decreases the, attack, uh, the accuracy of attacks by enemy bombers and torpedo bombers meaning their torpedoes will go in a wider spread and their bombs are less likely to hit so keeping that in mind I've installed all the anti-air modifications possible so let's see how she does uh, this ship has been nerfed a, a bit a while back the shells fly pretty slow through the air, you might have noticed in my other video but hopefully we'll be able to get an aircraft carrier in this battle and we'll be able to show you where the true strengths of the uh... ooh, we've got true carriers on the enemy team, that's nice I'm just gonna take a look at their aircraft values we seem to have a better bogue and there's Rios even, so we might have a slight edge in the air, that might be important, might not be and hopefully we'll get some aircraft to shoot at, so you can see how that goes into action. Now what's also interesting is that we've got a little catapult fighter. Which is literally on the back of the ship over here. General quarters. There he is. It's a little yellow paint for some reason. Let's see, I'm going to be going to the left of the map. Yeah, we'll turn now. I can press Y and I can launch him. I've got four charges. And he either flies around for six minutes or until he gets shot down. And then I have to wait a couple minutes and I can send another one up. But yeah. Maximum range and this is pretty good. I've got a well skilled captain on here. And we can actually fire at a range of 17 and a half kilometers. Which is a lot better than the tier 7 Pensacola, which comes after this and I've also been playing with. And I'm trying to prepare that for my ranked battle, so that when I eventually get up to like rank 10, I can get in the Pensacola and maybe unlock the uh, tier 8 New Orleans. While I am uh, climbing the ranks to try and get the Jolly Roger flag. Now, it's always useful to pay attention to where your team is going because right now nobody seems to be going to the right side of the map We've got some enemy fighters in range you can tell this one is the the Japanese one because they only have four planes I've already shot two of them down I did not activate my defensive fire ability so that's just all the passive upgrades and everything working. And there we go. We've got someone else's catapult fighter assisting up. Nearly smacked into the destroyer. That's my bad for not paying too much attention. We're gonna launch one catapult fighter now. We get a little animation. Beam sticking out. Fighter taking off. It's pretty cool. We've got torpedo bombers. I will designate them as priority targets for my anti-air. Once they get within like... Yeah, I'm gonna activate my cool down now. Anti-aircraft gun crews are on full alert. So we will alert. do more damage. And if they decide to drop their torpedoes, the spread will be even bigger than normal. If they actually get to launch at all. So yeah, that's basically what the cruiser, what the Cleveland excels at. It's a very nice anti-aircraft cruiser. Just gonna 
put some shells down the middle. We're gonna turn around because we're gonna destroy a friend over there. And a Congo battleship. And they're gonna need some support at some point. Anti aircraft gun crews are on Especially leaving alert. the Congo alone out there. He'd probably get targeted by aircraft once they spot him. We've got a lot of our team is on the left side of the map, so they'll be fine, hopefully. They do have a lot of aircraft flying around over there. I certainly did my part in trying to turn the Congo over here. We've got an Omaha cruiser at 17 kilometers. Got reload height, uh, reload armor piercing because he's a lightly armored cruiser. Oh, we've actually got the planes heading towards the aircraft carriers now. I'm probably too far away to try and do anything about that, sadly. Yeah, I wouldn't arrive on time. We're already within a couple kilometers of them anyway. I'm still gonna try, I mean. They might take their time setting up an attack. I might be able to get a few shots in, maybe take one of them down, that would be nice. At the very least we're gonna try and block off their escape. They've got some fighters coming back and a lot of bombers. Well, the bombers won't be able to do much. At the very least we'll be able to... Yeah, he's, those, di those dive bombers are gonna fly straight over our heads. There we go, we've already shot one of them down. We should be able to take the other ones out without problems. There we go, and they're down. The torpedo bomb is in there as well, it's being engaged by fighters, that's fine and good. I don't know, can we shoot it out of the air right in front of the nose? Yep, there we go, we got that plane as well. So we're now on 13 aircraft kills. We're barely five minutes into the game. We've got more torpedo bombers incoming. It's like Christmas over here. Try heading over to the Congo now, since he'll probably be the target of those torpedo bombers, realistically speaking. We've got the Clemson ahead spotting a Furutaka uh, cruiser for us. It's uh, out of my range, sadly. I've been spotted by probably a destroyer of theirs. Wouldn't surprise me in the least. I won't be able to intercept those uh, torpedo bombers in time. He's got a spotter plane, that's not going to help him very much. Don't have any incoming fire yet, so nobody's in a position to shoot at me, I believe. I'm very curious where the destroyer is hanging around that he's been spotted. Oh, there they're in the middle. Okay, reload high explosive. We're going to try and contain this threat. There we go, we've got Enemy a couple of hits, nearly 3,000 damage. Oh, we're actually reload, my bad. I wasn't paying the fullest attention. Oh, there we go. 4,000 more damage, we knocked out some torpedo tubes. And that nearly killed him. Now we're gonna finish him off with a salvo. There we go, destroyer's dead. No time to take a breather, there will be more coming in. Especially with that second destroyer over there, we're gonna try and take him out as quickly as possible. No doubt torpedoes are in the water already. Yep, there they are, there they are. I I think we're good, I think we're good. Yep, we managed to dodge them all, Jesus Christ. This just goes to show. The Cleveland is an amazing ship. I love it with all my heart. Fire high explosive, clean the tubes. Omaha is turning away. No hits. There's the carrier. Though he's not a threat, a threat to us at all. Already shot down 17 planes so far. Now we can take a small bit of a breather, which is always appreciated after a very close call. We'll be able to take a 
take some laid back shots firing over the island abusing ballistic physics to the fullest just gonna find the correct lead on this Omaha I think those shots will land very nicely in the only minor damage here two cruisers left on the enemy team. There's another carrier down south as well. He's going to be coming around in a second. Get some shots out. Nope, he's turning away. All those shots are going to miss. We did capture B, however. So yeah, overall... Relaxed again. The immediate danger is pretty much done for in this match. Now it's just a case of trying to get in range and mopping up the remaining enemy ships. We probably won't even get to finish off the cruiser. Oh yeah, I mean the carrier. Do forgive me for not being able to speak. I am pretty tired. And I'm still a little shaky from that destroyer encounter to be perfectly honest I wasn't expecting to get quite so close it's basically a knife fight saying that I did my job. Shut down a lot of enemy planes, took out those destroyers, which probably would have ended up killing our carriers if I hadn't stopped them from coming through the middle. Or they would have captured the A point and we'd have a lot harder of a time trying to win this. So I'm feeling really good now. That was quite a nice performance if I do say so myself, of course. I am probably a bit biased in that. seen it I hope you don't mind and otherwise you're aware of my little bias. Omar is pretty much dead. Those shots look like they're going in, at least one of them is. Our friend gets the kill. That's okay. It's actually the Congo all the way back there that got the kill on the Omaha. Which is fine. He uh, didn't get to do much most of the game. Which means I have 
little problems trying to get my armor piercing to hit him and penetrate. Causing maybe even another lovely citadel penetration. Also makes it a lot easier to dodge the single fire. You don't really need to launch a catapult fighter at this point, but I like to do it anyway. Now, if we happen to be able to land some good hits on the Furutaka, we might be able to load some high explosive and get some more hits in on that New Mexico in the background. We're actually in the B capture zone right now. We had taken it before. New Mexico is not firing at me, so I'm gonna turn around before we get too close to him. Got some good hits on the Furutaka. He switched to high explosive. So he won't be able to do any massive citadel penetrations. I use my damage repair ability. or well, damage control ability. Only battles, only battleships have the uh, damage repair ability. More consistent damage on him now. Touch his return fire pretty easily if we do say so. No, he's likely a bit more worries at the moment than uh, just me. Get another hit in. He's down to 7,000 hit points. We can probably finish him off with a well aimed salvo. But therein lies your inherent problem. Although this salvo is looking pretty good at the moment. There we go, we've got some more damage in. And we ooh, it took a major hit, although if one of those shots hit, we will get the kill on the... Oh, what a tease. We're now at 11 kilometers range. Kill now. I mean, I'm practically dead myself at this point. Yes, there we go. We've got the kill. Sweet. And I am very happy to report that the New Mexico is not pointing his guns near me at all. So we're just gonna pepper him with high explosive and set him on fire. There we go. That's gonna be some ticking fire damage. Well, we've set him on fire in yet another location, so he's gonna burn for even more damage. He's not very happy with the fact that I'm peppering him with high explosive, but that's too bad for him. I do feel sort of bad for him, but then again, he is sailing a battleship. Most of the crew on a battleship wasn't actually there to fire the guns or reload them. They were just there to prevent and repair damage. I do think I've tickled a nerve. He's pointing his gun straight at me now. Boy, I'd like to see him try. I'm probably gonna die now, but... Oh, the hell with it. It's been a fun match. Yep, there we go. HE incoming. Oh, we've actually been stained. We're still here. Let's fire some more of the beloved high explosive at him then. He's down to 4,000 hit points. With a little bit of luck, we may be able to finish him off before his return fire. And oh, that would be awesome. Oh, there we go. Shots out and he is sunk. Our victory is and so sunk. am I. But that doesn't matter. There we go. We've got 172,000 hits. We've got 388... 338,000 credits 
4300 experience, double uh, times one and a half for first time uh, victory of the day, and premium count bonus 283 experience. 172 hits, 17 planes shot down, 8 incapacitations, most of them on the destroyers, 3 kills, 8 fire starters, 4 citadel penetrations. Top of the team on experience earned. Hardly surprising, we've got 42,000 damage with our armor piercing hits, and we've got 17,000 fire damage, 23,000 HE damage. Once again, a perfect showcase why you fire armor piercing at cruisers. You've even got some secondary battery shells in, probably on the destroyers. There we go, we've got one destroyer, six incapacitations, Jesus. Or is that just me being an idiot? I don't know, I'm tired. That was a bloody magnificent battle anyway. So I hope you enjoyed, if you did, leave a like below, leave a comment if you have anything to say, and I will catch you all next time. Have a good one, folks.